So far in this video series, we've looked at how to record a stack of lead vocal takes. And then we've looked at how to correct the timing and align the vocal takes together. And also how to correct the pitch so that everything is in tune with each other. In this video, we're going to take it a step further and prepare these vocal takes for mixing. Let's start by having a listen to all of these vocal tracks at the same level and pan dead to the center. Now I can't believe you're saying this is all you want, so it's all you get. Now they don't sound amazing, and that's because it's exactly the same thing coming at us straight down the center. And there's no stereo width. I also want to blend the levels of these vocal takes so that the most important ones are sticking through and some of the other ones are back on the periphery. So it's all about blending and mixing. If you're not an experienced singer when it comes to recordings, you may need to change the individual clip gain of each recording. And you can do that by picking up on the handle in the top center of each event. Now you can go and turn group editing off if you just need to change the volume of one particular clip like this. You'll get used to using your ears to hear the difference, but you can always look at the waveform to see if anything's poking out. An effective way of also being able to control the sound and the levels is to load a preset up in the channel strip window. I've loaded something to do with a male vocal and it's given me an EQ and a compressor and some saturation. Now this tube compressor is also going to control and limit my vocals so they won't get too loud. I can also load a compressor into the insert slots and here you can see I've got a tube compressor. Now, if I want to apply the same settings to every channel, I can come down to my inserts tab in the mix console and hold down alt or option and just copy this compressor across to all of my vocal tracks. I haven't done anything fancy here. Once again, I'm just using a generic male vocal preset. And now that I've got that compressor on, I've got this dynamic processing going on over the top of these lead vocals, which is going to control the sound and help me prepare for mixing. Speaking of preparing for mixing, I've got these two lead vocal tracks here, and they're both exactly the same. And I'm going to send them to a group track, and I'm just going to call this lead vocal low. The audio from those two low lead vocal tracks is now routed through this blue group channel, and I can use the fader on the group channel to control the volume of both the tracks. I've had a good think about how I want to position these lead vocals, and I'm going to create a group track for each of the main lead vocal parts. So here's my plan. I've got the original lead vocal that I recorded in the first video. That's going to be my main lead vocal. Then I've got a double, which I'm going to distort and add effects to. So that's gonna be my lead vocal effects track. I've got my two low melody vocals, which I'm going to pan. And then I've got these two high lead vocal melodies, which is an octave above. And I'm also going to pan them and drop them back in the mix a little bit. So everything starts to sound blended together. Now I've got a group track for everything. I can start to work on my stereo imaging. I thought that we could be that thing. A thing so pan that them we to the left and the right. Early. A thing that we could both take There's my high lead vocals. And notice whatever I do to the left, I'm replicating on the right hand side so everything's balanced. I'm going to leave the main lead vocals dead centered. That's an unwritten rule of mixing. Your vocals need to be right dead center. Now it's a matter of blending the actual volume itself. So I'm going to drop my lead vocal, the low and the high lead vocals anyway, just a little bit further down and then I've got the option of blending in between these two lead vocal tracks and as I said before one of the lead vocal tracks I'm going to add distortion to and we're going to cover adding distortion in the next video but I'm just going to turn it on and you can hear that that's really started pushing that lead vocal through we're also going to cover effects in a later video but for now just to give some ambience to these lead vocals, I'm adding an effect track and I'm going to add Revelation, which is a reverb. So straight away, I've set up a send and here's how it sounds. Now, if I want to control the level or the volume of all of my vocal tracks, once again, I just select the channels, 
Right mouse click, and this time I'm adding a VCA fader, which sets up a fader with a link group. So now when I move this VCA fader, you can see all of the volumes in my lead vocal group are now moving in proximity to each other. So with the touch of one mouse button, I can control those five or six lead vocal tracks plus all of the group channels that we set up. And a nice neat thing about setting up a VCA fader is it has set up a link group, which means all of these group channels are now linked to each other. So if I want to add another send to another effects track, I've just got to do it to one channel and it applies to all of them. Let's listen to how those tracks were at the start of this video with nothing on them. I thought that we could be that thing. A thing that we could boldly. And now let's compare them to where they are after a couple of minutes of tweaking. I thought that we could be that thing. That's a huge difference, just in a couple of minutes of tweaking. In the next video, we're going to take a really close look at how you can add effects to even further enhance a lead vocal track. I'll see you there.